Hey guys, it's Beth, and welcome back to some more, uh, Minecraft. In the last episode, I complained about Pokemon for a really long time, so this time, let's complain- Well, not Pokemon itself, but their community surrounding it. So this time, let's do something different. I'm going to complain about another one of my favorite, uh, things, and the community surrounding it. So, let's take a minute and talk about- the absolute frickin' state of the Dragon Ball community. Ooh, boy. So, Dragon Ball, everyone knows, is one of the most popular animes to ever exist. Like, along with Sailor Moon, it's probably responsible for the, like, major adoption of anime in the West. Like, it, it helped bring over an entire, like generation of people into the uh into the genre now um the thing is with that um oh boy here we go uh the the amount of elitism in that community probably has ruined it beyond recognition um, and what I mean by that is, like, okay, so, you, p Dragon Ball is a community where there are so many different f fans and generations of fans that will never, ever get along with each other. Pretty much every interaction about Dragon Ball is an argument, and I believe this all starts... I don't want to say that... Okay, so let's... Let, let's, uh... Let, let's just step back for a moment. Let's discuss a few problems up front. Um... I specifically go down the path of... Elitism makes Dragon Ball inaccessible to a lot of people... Because of how... People act about certain series within Dragon Ball. So, le let's start at, like, the most tame one, which is probably the one that says something along the lines of, you should not be watching Dragon Ball if you did not watch the original series. The thing is, the original series of Dragon Ball is very different than what comes after in Z, GT, Super, and Heroes. It is very different. It is still very much in Toriyama's gag manga origin style. And some people might just not be into that. And truth being told, you are told enough through context clues that we're... You know, even if I do recommend watching the original Dragon Ball because it's very good, sometimes people just don't need to watch it. It's not like... It's not like JoJo where you actually should watch every part because they are all pretty important to each other and you shouldn't skip the first part solely because they have a different power set than what comes later. It's literally just like, you don't need to watch this because it is literally a different series. Ah, ah beans, my potatoes. Oh well. Um, so, like, that, that, that's a, that's, like, a start of it. It's, like, people are very, very, um, very eager to knock people out of the community for not starting at the same place as them. And then you have the dub and sub things, which, that's a whole anime thing in general. It's not just Dragon Ball, but it's particularly bad there, where it's like, if you call an attack a different thing than what another person likes, if you say Spirit Bomb instead of Genki Dama or, like, Ryo Fufu Ken instead of Wolf Fang Fist, you are going to get a completely, completely different, like, response from people. It, it can actually make people absolutely livid just because it's what you grew up watching instead. Like, 
maybe you didn't have access to any sort of way to watch Japanese cartoons outside of, you know, like, Toonami or 4Kids or whatever, like, Funimation dubs. I don't know. Like, maybe you don't have access to, like, you didn't have access to the originals. Because, well, media preservation is inconsistent at best and uh, gatekeeped at most. Uh, nah, probably not the best term. But, like, intentionally n more difficult to find because of the people who own it. That's a better way of describing it. Um, so you have the issue of where you started watching and what version you watched. And then it doesn't... Then you go into the subjective stuff. Like, which series is your own personal favorite? I feel so bad for everyone who loves GT. Because I love GT. GT is a very fun show. The natures of elitism within the Dragon Ball community would have essentially tarnished the entire name of that show and everything about it solely because it wasn't what they wanted at the time. And I f also feel bad for Super fans, because here's the thing, I will complain about Super until the day I die. I dislike Super a lot, but I also see a lot of good moments within it. You shouldn't discount an entire fran like series solely because it's not entirely what you want. Um, like, I love GT, and I understand it's not entirely what everyone wants. I'm going to be reasonable about that. And, you know, I don't particularly love Super, but there are some really, really good moments in it, so I'd never want to completely count out Super. Because it's got some of the highest highs in, like, Dragon Ball with, like, Ultra Instinct, essentially. You essentially have Ultra Instinct and, like, any Tournament of Power Frieza. Any Tournament of Power Frieza is just like, genuinely some of the best in all of Dragon Ball. <sighs> but then, you have the other issues. Um, you can have the issues of, what's it called? Um, shoot. Uh, like, lo look at GT. Please, please look at it, because it deserves as much love as you can give it. GT is not bad. It's just different. Like, that that's genuinely it. GT is fun, and has some really good moments, and, like, the actual story in GT, like, the ideas in GT are probably the best in the entire series. I'm not even joking. Like, the I- like, specifically the Shadow Dragons and Baby are two of the best ideas they ever put into Dragon Ball. And the Golden Ozaru, like, I, I genuinely don't understand how s people can dislike, like, those ideas, because they're just so ingrained into the ideas of Dragon Ball. Like, th they, they have so much to them that are pure Dragon Ball. Um, and then... Oh boy, okay, so... It's a very rough spot for you if you're someone who loves anything other than Z, actually. Because people will essentially immediately bring down whatever you like. It's like, I mean, I have an entire video discussing how much I hate Super Saiyan Blue as a transformation. But, like, at the same time... I do have to admit, it's got some good scenes, and it looks kinda cool and broly. So, like, even I can't fully hate it. Like, I do still fully hate it, but, like... It's just, like, I can understand why people enjoy what they enjoy. Oh boy. It's... It's upsetting. That is the best way to put it. It is upsetting 
the amount of hatred there is towards different parts of the franchise and the fandom as a whole. And you really are just, like, cut off from other parts if you like other parts. It's... It's actually kind of strange, like... The... A lot of people equate Dragon Ball with nothing but, like, just... Punches and transformations. And here's the thing. If that's all it is to you and you enjoy it, that's good. If you get more out of it and find all of, like, the story beats and, like, interesting, like, ideas and, like, concepts and, like, character moments, something different. Like, like looking at, like, Majin Vegeta or, like, uh... Gohan's Super Saiyan 2 transformation sequence. It's good to get different things out of things. But you shouldn't intentionally make it so that people essentially have, like... You shouldn't... You should not neglect different people's experiences with something. It's like... A lot of people do, like the best and worst Dragon Ball movies, for instance, that's entirely subjective. Like, I may n not like the Broly movies that much, but I'm aware of people who love them a lot because they loved watching it as a kid. And sometimes that's all you need. Like, genuinely, sometimes all you need is nostalgia and that's okay. Sometimes all you want out of it is just very fun fights, and just, like, the rule of cool exists for a reason. Not everything has to make sense, sometimes things can just be fun. And that's what I like about Dragon Ball to begin with, because Dragon Ball very much pertains to that rule of, oh yeah, we're, we are essentially just like... We are a bunch of, essentially, gods fighting each other beyond a certain point. We should have fun with that. You know, like... I love the BoJack movie. People hate the BoJack movie. I think it's some of Gohan's best in the entire series. I think that its references and, like, the emotional impact of showing, like, people hate... <laughs> Let me actually go into a Bojack side tangent for a second. I have seen people complain about how bad of a dad Goku is for so fucking long. And then, Goku, did, in the Bojack movie, literally fucking breaks out of heaven. Like, comes back from the dead to help Gohan for a moment. To hold him in his arms and say, you can do this. And people hate that. Why? That literally is showing Goku being a good dad and caring about his kid. Why would that be a bad thing? It's just so dumb. It's so dumb to me. It's... Like... Why? Why can't... Why... Why do you dislike that? It's like, exactly what you've asked for. It's a sequence of Goku caring about his kid and showing that, even in a situation where, you know, knowing the gods of the universe at that point, he's literally escaping death. He could be seriously punished for doing that, theoretically. Like, he is not coming back in any traditional sense. He is literally just going out of his way to say, Please, I know you can do this, son. I love you and I care about you. You're strong. You can do this. And that is the impotence of Goku of Gohan's transformation in Bojack. It's what brings him to Super Saiyan 2. It's lit it's so good because of what it means emotionally. Like I people love 
freaking Gohan Super Saiyan 2 transformation in the Cell Saga, there is no... Like, the emotional weight of that comes from Android 16, who doesn't really have any connection to Gohan. Like, he's literally just an android. And I guess that can, like, come into, like... Gohan sees that his lack of being... Like... Go Gohan's inaction directly h harmed an innocent directly in front of him. Like, that is a way of looking at it. Like, that that I can completely understand. That makes sense. But, in Bojack, you see it's literally Gohan, like, essentially, like, coming to terms with the fact his father is gone. He, he, like, he is not coming back. And he has to come to terms with the fact that even though he may not want to fight, he, it is not his place to decide that. It is his duty to help the people who need help. And I don't know. I just, I really like that. I like that Gohan essentially has to come to terms with the fact that Goku didn't even ask to be a hero. He just enjoyed fighting. Gohan didn't particularly enjoy fighting, but it's one of the connections that he has with his father. So, and he realizes that in universes like Trunks, Trunks didn't have an like a oper like a chance to avoid fighting. That's all like that was his only option was to fight, was to try simply just to survive. So, Gohan has to learn that even though he doesn't want to fight, he has to fight for those who can't. Because there are people in that universe who aren't strong enough to do it on their own. And I think that's something really powerful and beautiful about the series is that, yes, Gohan lost his childhood innocence by having to become a hero and having to fight people and having to kill at a young age. But he also has to come to terms with the fact that this is the only way that it can be. It's just, like, it's so genuinely impactful in what it does, and I genuinely love it for what it does. And then they ruin Gohan. Gohan's arc entirely ends, um, like, Gohan as a character does not exist past the line, fight you. No, I want to kill you. Like, that is the end of Gohan. <laughs> Unfortunately, that is the end of Gohan. Like, you're, you're not going to get Gohan again after that, unfortunately. It's upsetting, but it's true. Gohan was a character for a while. Not anymore. Um, and like, if you, I don't know, it, it's just like, it sucks being a Dragon Ball fan because the issue with being a Dragon Ball fan is that people are going to hate what you love in your, and it's not going to be from an outsider, it's going to be from someone who also watches the same exact thing as you do and you are going to be judged for liking what you like within that series people are going to hate you for enjoying gt people are going to hate you for enjoying super people are going to hate you for not watching the original people are going to hate you for playing the games and learning the story that way people are going to hate you for which dub you watched if you watch the dub at all it's and I don't want to say that a large amount of the blame goes to Team Four Star, because the truth is, I really like those guys. I love their stuff, but they also definitely played a large part in a lot of the elitism and problematic parts of the community from the beginning. It's not something that I like saying, and I'm not saying it, like, happily, like, I love Team Four Star. Team Four Star is great. 
um, I really, really like, um, all of their gaming stuff, especially. But they also are directly responsible for a lot of the problems within the community because they... The issue with making a parody is that you're going to essentially... It, it is a parody. It's going to be an exaggerated, uh, like, joking way of looking at a series. But unfortunately, a lot of the jokes around Dragon Ball are directly harmful to the interpretation of the series and harmful to the characters and can eventually turn them directly into nothing but memes. And that is why a lot of people are like very up and against Team Four Star because they directly blame them for how Super turned out and how Super essentially turned the characters into nothing in exchange for just meme potential. And they did not start the Goku is a bad dad trope. They did not start the idiot Goku trope. And that is not Goku's character and that's not who he is as a person. We all know this. And we should all know this rather. But unfortunately it popularized it and definitely lasted and added an impact to the series as a whole which we're not going to see end anytime soon. It is essentially the fate of these characters. That they are stuck within a certain parameter, and you are going to be stuck with mischaracterized carbon copy, um, cardboard cutout versions of characters that you once loved and had real depth to them. I don't blame Team Four Star for it, but, and I, I hope they don't blame themselves too much, but they can't pretend that there isn't some fault. They, there, there is blood on their hands, whether through their own attempt or not. It, it's just not, oh god, especially when it comes to pronunciation and like even beyond just like the actual series things pronunciation and using move names oh god oh geez you are in a completely different universe with that once again i love team four star i really do i really really love team four star uh i prefer their gaming stuff and like their stuff that's more just like my favorite stuff from them at like outside of just like the gameplay stuff which i do really love is um their top tens uh like their top 12 specifically rather uh transformations and like um fights and uh techniques because for that th that's entirely them just talking about different things that they love about Dragon Ball and how much they love the series. And that comes through a lot better than, like, a lot of their other stuff, where you genuinely feel like sometimes they really, really hate what they're doing in, like, the series that they're parodying, when in reality it's a labor of love and, like, they do genuinely care about the series. I don't know. I don't really have any end to what I was saying there, but I think that's the best place to cut it off for now. So, thank you all so much for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed, and I hope to see you in the next episode. Bye bye